Today I'm gonna show you how to install external graphics card for your old laptop. In this video, I have HP Pavilion G4 with Core i5 2430M and Radeon HD 6470. So first, before buying an external graphics dock, you have to open your laptop. In order to know the type of the available socket, I have to do that by opening the bottom of the case, removing the battery, and unscrewing this panel. As I have to pull the protective panel securely like this, you will need to locate the Wi-Fi adapter to be able to identify the type of the socket. And here it is, the Wi-Fi adapter near the RAM module, which I'm going to unscrew it and see how it looks. First, I need to unhook these two antenna cables. And then, I will need to unscrew this, so that I will be able to take it off. As I'm pulling this Wi-Fi adapter, carefully. And here it is. Apparently, I have, the mini PCIe, socket type. And now, I have to search, on the internet. The mini, PCIe, external graphics dock. There are several types, so don't make any mistake, before you decide to buy one. As for me, I have to get this one. The EXP GDC. MPCIe version. There is also, the Express Card version. And then, the NGFF version. Finally, the M.2 NVMe version. Which is the newest model. Now, I'm going to unbox, this EXP GDC graphics dock. Seems like I got this, mini, PCIe, to HDMI cable. The ATX, power pin connector. And finally, the EXP GDC dock, version, 8.5C, which is the name engraved, on its PCB board. This, is the mini PCIe cable, with HDMI on the other end, which I need to plug it, into my laptop. This, is where I need to plug, the motherboard's pin, and the CPU pin, and this 8 pin on the other end to the eGPU power socket. Basically, it tells the power supply to turn on or off. As for the power supply, I bought this so-called gaming PSU for about $15. It's got 700 watts, which is really funny and obvious knockoff. But, it is more than enough to be able to supply about 120 watts for the GPU. And it's got all the power connectors which I need for the eGPU and the main graphics card. Now, I need to plug this 20 pins power connector, like this. Also known as, the motherboard power cable. I have to make sure, it snaps, into each other. Perfectly. Make sure that these green cable, aligned with these green cable, on the other end. Now, I have to plug this 4-pin CPU connector into the socket. I have to make sure it snaps into each other perfectly. And then, those two power connectors should be connected like these. Now, I have to plug this 8 pins to the eGPU. After connecting all the power cables to the eGPU, now it's time to prepare my graphics card. I've got right here, the MSI GTX 1660 Ti, with 6GB of VRAM. It needs about 120 watts of power. Now let's connect the graphics card to the eGPU. Right here, the shape of this eGPU is sturdy enough to support the weight of the graphics card. 
and then, the 8 pins PCIe, power cable, from the power supply, to the graphics card. Right here. And now, they all look like these. Now, I'm going to plug, this MPCIe, cable, to the socket. And don't forget, to screw it back, to secure it from moving. Once it's done, the setup should look like this. Now let's put back the protective panel. Fortunately, mine is elastic enough, so I don't need to cut it off, for the cable. After putting back the battery, and then, we're almost done. Basically, I have to sacrifice, the Wi-Fi adapter. Now let's plug the final HDMI cable, to the eGPU. Now, if I want to use the internet, I could use the Android, USB tethering function. To prevent my laptop from overheating, I'm using this, USB laptop fan. To make the airflow, sufficient enough, and then, everything will look, like this. Now, it is time to turn on my laptop, for the first time. There is a chance, that the eGPU, is not detected. This means, I have to access the BIOS. Because apparently, I need to make some changes. For some reasons, my eGPU, refusing to turn on, if I didn't enable certain configuration in BIOS. In my case, I need to enable, the internal network adapter boot. After that, I need to save the BIOS, let the laptop to boot, and then shut it down, immediately. This time, the eGPU should be working, as you notice the fans on the graphics card, and the PSU, is turning on immediately, as I pushed the power button, from the laptop. I also need an external display, from the graphics card output. Because apparently, the maximum bandwidth, is just 2.5, gigabit, per second. This is not ideal to use the built-in laptop display, because by doing so, you will be limited, with 1.25 gigabit, per second, which is half, of the maximum bandwidth. Now, I'm going to install, the graphics card driver, which I downloaded, from NVIDIA website, for the GTX, 1660 Ti. It is very recommended, to use the graphics card, with the opposite, of the laptop's GPU. For example, if your laptop already have, NVIDIA, GT, 9, 80M, then, you need to use, the AMD, Radeon graphics card. And the reason for that, is to avoid the conflict between two different driver of two different brand so that you don't have to uninstall the existing graphics driver because apparently the AMD Radeon and Nvidia driver can coexist at the same time in my case my laptop already have the AMD Radeon HD 6470 that means I need to use the Nvidia graphics card so that I don't need to uninstall, the Radeon driver. Finally, I need to use only the external display, in order to utilize, the entire bandwidth, of 2.5 gigabit, per second. I don't use my laptop's internal display, because the bandwidth, will be cut, by half. It will be disadvantage, and you will lose, a lot of FPS, in gaming performance. So that I need to, disconnect my laptop internal display. By selecting, projector only.
Now, let's see what happens if I try to shut down the system. You should be able to expect the eGPU and the PSU turning off at the same time. Thank you for watching and see you next time in another eGPU gaming benchmark testing.